short, famous guy podcast. And uh, Mr. Dossman actually helped came up with that name. Hey! But uh, we have multiple hosts that do it, so I don't have to do it every day. In fact, I rarely do one. And we're trying to get so many hosts that you only have to do one every two months. And which kind of takes down on the drudgery of it, and they only have to be five minutes. So sometime during that two months, you're going to say, hey, this is cool, something you learn or something you play with, and then you can do your show. It doesn't have to be about, this is how you secure a Linux box. It can be about all kinds of things. One guy did one on the uh, thought process of something, of designing or helping design a, uh, what was it, Zigman throw in some kind of launcher? Yeah, it was a softball. A softball launcher, and like the thought press process behind it, which is really interesting. And uh, we have a guy that's in high school that releases them every day because he's the only person that goes home at night to where his parents live and has time to get on the computer for a few minutes and update the site so that most every day there's a new show out and it's about the same time every day. Yeah, I was really stunned. Uh, at one point I was asked to be interviewed for a show and I said that's fine and I was having the interview occur over Skype, which was already pretty interesting. I know that one person was in Pennsylvania, I think one was in DC. At some point while we were setting up, one of the kids' moms yelled at him because he wasn't doing his bar mitzvah training. And he convinced mom that he could wait an hour, finish this radio program he was doing, and then start on it. And one per and I was like, so how old are you? <laughs> like one was 12, one was 14, and they were interviewing me, I'm in my 30s. And so, they were, whereas most kids would be quite happy about the fact that they were able to press play and record on something and yell into it for a while, <laughs> they were quite happy to be doing this interview with a you know, website owner across the country using Skype. So there was this uh, sense of youth that's a little unusual, unsettling. Now, I don't know the variance in your ages. We'll just do this very quickly. I don't think any of you are in your teens anymore, right? Okay, yeah, you're safe from droops. Anybody in the twenties? <laughs> no, in your twenties. Tony boy's in his teens. Yeah. Oh, you are in your teens. Okay, you're not 19. safe. Yeah. Not safe. <laughs> totally not safe. Lock your door. And then twenties? We have twenties. All right, and thirties. Yeah. So we have this actual. Interesting. So, well, interesting to me. So, uh, do you think it's a product of the young, of youth, of time, or is it a case of somebody getting? Do you perceive it as more of this is a brand new thing and I want to be a part of it, or in your case of after watching this for all this time, I want to jump in? I don't know. I almost would think it would be more of uh, with the younger crowd that when you're young, you've got all kinds of stuff to say and you want to say it, so that might be part of it. I, I think that I'm kind of the opposite way of him. I think because there really is, I mean, an even more varying age than what we have here. I mean, there's people in their, you know, middle, uh, like going through their midlife crisis and doing shows like, you know, I, I think uh, I've, I've heard shows, hacker media shows that are people's, you know, up to, you know, 45 or above. I'm not totally sure. But I mean, I think that it really is more just a, it's this kind of this cool new thing to do, you know. I mean, as hackers, we like to share things. And this is a really easy way to share things because, like in a text file, you can't, you know, put emphasis on specific things. But speaking, you can like make sure that people get the point across that you're not, you know, you're not saying something another, and they're taking it another way, because you can let them know by the tone of your voice. But uh, okay, yeah. anybody else? I think a lot of it is people genuinely wanting to voice uh, what I feel, what I think, what I want to do. But then as I just brought up, uh, we're, I think it's still relatively new to the point where people are wearing their digital media loafers on the digital runway. And they're just kind of showing them off. So I, I think what we're going to get uh, as, as the strainer of time wears on, we'll, we'll, we'll still have, you know, we'll have more of the genuine stuff. But, but right now I still think that we're kind of in the, in the mix where everybody, oh, this new thing, oh, you know, they're just kind of showing off right now. So you're saying we're in a show boom that may end up in a show shakeout. That's your opinion? Yes. Okay. Well, I think as far as the whole show boom goes, it, it's the people who want to do it will continue doing it, uh, while the people who are just in it for, like, just because they know they can, and just to... The glory and the Just money? to get it out there. They, they, as we were saying before, only do, like, four or five episodes, two, three, but 
once you get past maybe about 15, 20 or so, um, it seems like it's going to continue on, especially if it's a weekly thing. Uh, actually, advice I would give if you're interested in starting is to do a few, maybe about anywhere from five to like around five episodes before releasing any, which was uh, an idea Troops was talking about. And maybe not even release those episodes because maybe you don't have a format down for your show yet. And then continue on at whatever episode and call that episode one. That yeah, that's a really good idea. Because the first, uh, sorry, the first few episodes of everyone's show are very. I'm learning how to use Audacity, and you know the sound quality is horrible, and they haven't figured everything out. So that's actually a really good idea. As I recall, Droops, actually one of your your one of your first shows was like 90 minutes, something like that. There was something where you achieved a show that was like a mini series. I think it's the one that you got drunk in the middle of. Yeah, they were. Um, I used to do a different show that was supposed to be uh, the Droops Radio Show, yeah. and that was really a dumb idea, like this bad name. So we came up with this name called Infonomicon, and I couldn't do the show one day, and I asked this guy to help out, and then he and I started doing the show, and we had really good little banter between us, and then we just started getting drunk a lot, and then I had a roommate last summer, and he and I just that's what we did. And yeah. it, was oh, it was very bad. It was I don't recommend was, anyone listening I, to it. I loved listening to it. I transcribed them. Yeah. <laughs> they were fantastic because you actually took a whiz break during it <laughs> outside in your front yard. And it, re it really brought in that sense of community. Because <laughs> you were sharing your whiz with us and with apparently all of your neighbors. Anyway. Another piece of advice I just remembered recently um, is, since I do this out of a studio, I have somewhat pro gear, and um, when an XLR cable does not work, cut it and throw it out. <laughs> That's what I learned, and it, it hasn't failed me yet. That's cable cop, twenty dollars. I have to agree that. Um, uh, one good way to keep your podcast going is to use alcohol um, because you know if that's the day when you sit down and have a couple beers that you know really helps you uh, stay with it one other thing that we do is we have about 12 or 13 people involved in our podcast and we have one guy that's the MC he's there every week but um, you know then the cast is pretty much rotating so if you don't feel like doing it one week you just blow it off and it doesn't matter because you know there's a whole roster of people that, that are available uh, I think it's also more interesting for the listeners because it's you know usually not the same combination of people more than once in a row. Right. Now, your show is actually the only one on the panel that's actually been broadcast. Yes, that's correct. We had a little bit of a unique um, beginning to our show. We started as a radio program, and um, uh, we just uh, patched a, an AM radio into an uh, IceCast server, and we streamed it on the Internet in uh, real time as we did the broadcast, and then we would archive that as an mp3 and put it on the website um, and then we figured that we were just an RSS file away from a podcast so we go ahead and do that um, and over time we just decided to drop the, the conventional broadcast and do the podcast only. Did you find any kind of market difference between working uh, for a broadcast environment versus your podcast? Did your show change significantly? Um, not at first. It took a while for us to, um, you know, get the hang of doing it in a different format, uh, but it's certainly more laid back. We don't have uh, time constraints. We don't have to take breaks at certain points in the show. Um, on the air, uh, we took a lot of calls from uh, people calling in, um, and that was obviously a lot harder uh, with the podcast, so that, that uh, part of it went away. Um, but to compensate for that, we came up with uh, sort of weekly features that we wanted to do. And so we have like this menu of weekly features. And just like the uh, contributors, those vary from week to week too. Um, maybe we have 15 different topics that we'll talk about, but we'll only get to three or four or five of them in a given podcast. Um, so, you know, one of the things that one would think would be markedly different between broadcasting and with that would be the discipline. Do you miss the discipline? Um, maybe the listeners do. Um, but it's, it's actually, it's easier for us. It's uh, more laid back uh, to, you know, not have any of those constraints. So do you guys think that the show is done for yourself or for your listeners? Um, like I said before, we try to um, reproduce that uh, atmosphere of the IT office in a medium-sized organization. 
Um, so we really do it for ourselves um, and for the people that we think would enjoy that type of thing. And, um, you know, uh, the listeners just, um, you know, we get feedback from the listeners. They say they enjoy it. So I don't know if it's a self-selection problem, but the audience we have seems to enjoy the, the format we have. How about the rest of you? Do you think that you primarily do it for yourself to give yourself a voice, or do you do it because you think that there's this gap that these people that you haven't met need to have from you? I, I think, and kind of in the same way as him, I think it's a little bit of both, like a combination work. I mean, I do it for myself because it's a lot of fun, and I like to, you know, be able to just talk about whatever the hell I want, and you just really do whatever I want, and people will possibly enjoy it. But, uh... I also think that it is kind of, I, I mean, I do, I started my show because I felt that it was important to talk about things like, like I said, like about phone freaking, because there really wasn't, when I started the show, there wasn't a big uh, outlet for this kind of information, and I found out that that was because there's not really a lot of news that happens, like, weekly in this kind of, uh, this kind of field, and so uh, it, it's kind of gone down from the uh, telecommunications talk from there, but I think it, it is kind of both for for me to have some fun hobby to do and then for other people to uh to be able to enjoy but anybody else have an answer different than that my show is done totally for me i do it because i enjoy it like almost nothing else and the day that that changes is will be the day that i no longer do any more ninja night school I enjoy just running around the house, driving around my car. I'm making all kinds of noises. I'm talking to myself. I have a blast. I live in my own little world. So I figured why not uh, record a little bit, and then I can actually layer in extra sound effects, and I can in, you know, increase the you know, spontaneous and wonderfulness of my own little world. And uh, I can share my little world with you guys. And the fact that there's actually people out there who download it and enjoy it, that blows my mind and humbles me more than anything else. So... Uh, you know, it's it's really just for me, and I enjoy doing it because it's fun. So, and the fact that people download it and enjoy it is just uh, that's the cherry on top. Well, uh, I I kind of had that whole speech under the table here, and he just read it and took it. Uh, actually, I if if anybody's seen the Hodgepods that is our show, it's anything and everything that interests us that we have a lot of fun to do. Yeah, you know, that we have a lot of fun doing. The spontaneity of it is pretty much just how our everyday life is. What we do, what we do, what we take apart, what we build, and the fact that you know there's other people that are totally into it, and actually take the time to respond to us and uh, keep egging us on really, <laughs> really adds a little extra something to the sh to the show. But we're not a catering service, so you know if there's something that people want to see. Well, then do your own thing. Well, let's see. The, um, on my show, it's pretty much for us, but it's also to get ourselves in a position where we have to converse about the certain topics. And it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's not just me. It's also Silent Slade, Morbid, D Mad, and we, we also have a couple other people that we could call. And it's really for us about the sharing of information and we put it out there because we feel others may be interested, and it turns out that they are. Yeah, don't smile. Um, when RFA ended, there was a, uh, a gap, and uh, I was going back listening to a bunch of them, missing the days of the show, and I said, well, I, I could do this. And I started it just to see if I could, and it became immense fun, and we continued the show until it was no longer fun, and then we stopped. And with the, uh, the TWAT radio, Dossman and I were on the phone or somewhere. We were talking about it. And uh, we were talking, wouldn't it be cool if we just had a show that didn't have all this crap and it came out every day and we learned something new? And we started it because we didn't figure anyone else would. And the first few shows were us. And I intentionally recorded them horribly. So it was very crappy. And the kids at Dig were making fun of us because of our sound quality. And I have some good stuff. I can make it sound really nice. But we didn't want it to sound too good because then people would be more concerned about the audio quality and say, no, I couldn't do that than the content of the shows. And that's our goal. And it's mainly so I can get a show every day and learn something without actually having to do anything. But anyway, it works out. And you've learned quite a bit. And I have. Um, OK, we're going to open up the questions from the audience because you know, obviously we want to know where you want us to go with this. Does anyone have any questions for the panel or for me? Yes, sir. So the name Twat. The name Twat. <laughs> I understand the play on Twit. Do you have do you have have you experienced any resistance problems for the other than I noticed because I actually just got it 
through iTunes yeah. Thursday, and it's 